Welcome to TYT Sports, everybody. Ben Mankiewicz here. Following Paul George's difficult to look at uh, injury in the USA basketball scrimmage uh, and the fact that it seems like George is out for the year, but there's a lot of talk about whether NBA players should be participating in this sort of activity in the offseason. So a good piece today from Ramona Shelbourne and Brian Windhorst in ESPN about sort of the pall that came over the crowd, the, the, the screams from the crowd as they were watching it on their phones, uh, and this notion that it somehow will have a long-term effect on USA basketball and on playing in the offseason. Uh, I don't think it will. I don't think Shelbourne and Windhorst suggest that it will, but I, I just think, again, we're asking some, some questions that wouldn't be asked if the injury hadn't been quite so gruesome. And the fact is, he's been surgically repaired. Uh, he is a committed professional athlete, and I presume, fingers crossed, that he'll come back to what he once was. But here's a, a little bit from that article. Hard to see that spirit dying about game respecting game, they write. But it's also hard to see how these players get back on the court anytime soon after being on the court for that horrific injury Friday night, or whether their franchises will let them. Ultimately, that will be a choice for each player in each franchise. As USA Basketball Managing Director Jerry Colangelo said Friday night, now is not the time to make any decisions like that. Colangelo, I think, is right in that regard, that we don't want to be rash here. Let's wait a week and wait two weeks, and then I suspect everybody will take a deep breath uh, and recognize that this was a bad injury that happens when elite athletes play at this level. In the immediate aftermath of a franchise player going down, one who was about to start a five-year, $90 million deal that represents the deepest investment in Pacers history, there was an outcry in front offices of the dangerous downside of playing for the national team. This has long been an issue bubbling below the surface, forgotten during opening ceremonies and on medal stands, but sure to flare up again now and perhaps threaten the fantastic capital Colangelo has built by transforming the program over the last eight years. But here's what Adam Silver has to say. Uh, first and foremost, hearts go out to Paul George, his family, and the Pacers, obviously that. Second, he says, basketball has unquestionably taken incredible strides since 1992 when NBA players began playing in the Olympics, not to mention the jump many of our players have made in terms of ability, leadership, and passion for the game by playing uh, for their home countries. Injuries, he says, can happen at any time, any place. That's obvious, an obvious point. Experience our players have enjoyed by participating in their national teams, however, are ones that are unique and special in almost every other way. Continuing. Silver says, third, our goal is to make basketball the number one sport in the world. This is not going to happen unless governments around the world continue to back basketball as a healthy way for their youth to become physically fit and learn important values like discipline and teamwork. Come back to me for a sec here. So that really is the most important point. Like, Mark Cuban points out that FIBA and the International Olympic Committee have essentially hustled the NBA because it's not about patriotism, it's about money. And I, I think that basically Mark Cuban is dead right. But that said, there is some patriotism involved. I don't know, I don't feel an ounce of patriotism for the U United States basketball team. I, I suspect I'm not alone in that regard. Um, I mean, my indifference is overwhelming as to whether we win. In fact, I'll root for other countries. Do you know why? Because we're the big bullies. So I like to see a team that, uh, an upstart, just like, it, just like it's easier to root for the U.S. in soccer, it's harder to root for the U.S. Uh, in basketball just because if you're a sports fan, you tend to root, uh, at least a sports fan like me, you tend to root for the underdogs. But, but Silver's point there, about that as the commissioner of the NBA and the, the mantra for the league, the idea for the league is that they make basketball the number one sport in the world. You're not gonna make basketball the number one sport in the world unless you have these international competitions. So in that sense, Mark Cuban uh, is wrong. It's not just about money for the IOC and FIBA. It may not be about patriotism either because being making basketball the number one sport in the world is also about money, but that benefits the NBA and Cuban uh, has some interesting ideas about how to make that happen. He says the NBA ought to tell FIBA and the IOC to screw off and that the NBA ought to host the World Cup of Soccer, organize, sponsor, run the World Cup of, so World Cup of Soccer. There already is a World Cup of Soccer. It's called the World Cup. <laughs> he says that uh, the NBA ought to do the World Cup of Basketball and the NBA would then take the money from it, the NBA would put it on, all these are interesting points. Paul George could have been just as easily hurt in that competition as well. We haven't really heard from uh, doctors yet uh, about exactly, he, the surgery was good, we're presuming he'll miss the year, but I don't know. It'd be great if he could come back, and obviously mostly what we want, even if he misses the entire season, is that he, he comes back and can play at the level that he was. Uh, so Ben, we actually do have some information from doctors. Uh, not Paul George's doctor, but interestingly enough, uh, Dr. Patrick Kersey, who uh, treated Kevin Ware after his gruesome injury in the 2013 
uh, NCAA season. He came out and was basically saying it's six to uh, six to twelve weeks for the bone to fully heal, uh, but it's gonna biggest obstacle is gonna be Paul George's patience uh, and willingness to get back to his old self. It's gonna take time. Uh, Fifteen months to the start of next year's NBA season. Uh, and moving forward with that, he feels like it's going to be about 18 months before Paul George will be able to be back to his full all-star self. Okay, well, that's encouraging overall because that's, first of all, just the mere fact that Kevin Ware's doctor says that he could return to his former self. As every player who's gone through this injury, an injury like this, an injury this severe, will say it's almost always confidence, believing in yourself that that leg, that ankle's not going to snap again when you plant it. Um, so that's good news. Uh, that does seem to indicate that next season is probably lost, but, you know, we're 15 months, and if that doctor says 18, it could well be 15, and he could be ready for the start of the 2015-16 season, but, or he'll miss the first 25 games, which is also okay, as long as he came back. But, you know, as, and to see Derek Rose back, basically missing essentially two full seasons is great. Rose appears to have that explosiveness. A guy like Gilbert Arenas never got his career back after his injuries, and he rushed it. I don't know if the rushing it caused him not to be able to come back to his former self, or if it was the severity of the injury, or if the surgery didn't take, or if him pushing it was the wrong thing to do. Uh, I know that nobody has really questioned Gilbert Arenas' work ethic, so I don't think it was effort. But you don't know. Uh, but fingers crossed, obviously, for Paul George.